brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, I've been asked to give more details into what happened to me on July 20th, 2009, as far as the hell aspect. And so uh, that's what I'm going to try and do today. Uh, before I go into that, though, I want to let everyone know that it seems that we're set, we're stepping on uh, Satan's toes. <laughs> Glory to God. And uh, he hates it. We're reaching a lot of people. We're reaching a lot of people around the world. I've got subscribers and viewers from literally all over the globe. From Australia, Germany, Japan, Canada, United Kingdom, all over the continent of Africa. Um, praise God. His message is getting out. And to all those who may want to stamp out this message, I want to let you know that it won't happen. I will continue to preach my story. I will continue to tell my story with my last dying breath. I'm doing as God asked of me, and I'm going to stick to my story, and I will boldly, defy, uh, boldly um, defend it in the truth. Uh, like I said to all who are viewing this, um, it's your choice as to whether or not you choose to believe. Uh, I can't make you believe. I can only share with you what I experienced. And that's what I'm trying to do today. The whole hope and purpose of that is to let you know that God loves you and that there is a better way. There is hope. Amongst all the darkness in this world, there is hope. And that hope is Jesus Christ. Um, back to uh, the events that happened that night. As I stated before in my, in my first video, I was heading home from work and um, I just pulled 30 days offshore. I work in the oil and gas industry and uh, it was late at night when I came into uh, the docks. I had taken a boat this particular time, did not fly in. And by the time I got uh, from the docks to where I live, it was late at night. Uh, the entire time I was driving, I had uh, Satan at my shoulder constantly whispering in my ear um, to go get some drugs and I kept trying to fight it kept trying to fight it and finally I uh, relented and said you know well, what the heck let's 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 do it uh, it's not gonna happen anyway and uh, it's funny how when Satan wants something to happen he just makes all the doors swing wide open and uh, everything just happened and fell into place it's um, it's eerie. Anyway, um, as before stated, uh, I called up a number to one of my connections, and uh, he said it was happening. So I went over there and um, presented me with a package. I looked at it. It was uh, a package of cocaine. It was a, a high-grade, high-quality cocaine. Said it was the bomb. Uh, and I was like, yeah, right. It was too much to... Uh, it was a lot more than what I'd asked for, and so I didn't believe it to be true. I figured it was just a bunch of bunk, and uh, I opened it up, tasted it. Instantly, my entire mouth turned instantly numb, and I realized, wow, uh, this was a high-grade, high-quality product. And uh, I asked him what he wanted. He wanted a ridiculously low figure. I threw the money at him and took it and ran. Uh, figured he was so high, he didn't know what he was doing and I wanted to take advantage of the fact. Uh, I pulled up into my house, uh, did a small line, and uh, went into the house, uh, put stuff up on a top shelf in my uh, bathroom. My wife, God, God bless her, she's only five foot tall, so if I want to hide anything, all I have to do is put it above five foot, and she can't reach it. She can't see it. So uh, I got undressed, went to bed, but... Uh, that dope kept talking, kept saying, uh, come do me, come do me, come do me. My heart was beating real fast, so I crawl out of bed. And um, once again, I, I don't know why I did what I did. Cannot explain it. Uh, all I can say is uh, God's will was done. But for reasons unknown to me, I took that entire package and dumped it completely at one time in my mouth and ate it. Uh, 
instantaneously my entire mouth was completely numb. I, uh, I, I couldn't even feel my tongue or my lips or my mouth. I was trying my best to move my mouth up and down to, to get it all down. Uh, I reached down in the bathroom sink and got some water, put it in my mouth to kind of, uh, it was like a paste um, to wash it down. <laughs> Didn't want to lose one drop. Uh, not that it would kill me or anything like it did, but um, anyway, uh, managed to finally get it all down. Uh, went and walked into my living room, sat down, lazy boy, and uh, was sitting there. My heart started beating real, real hard. Um, everything started spinning, and I realized uh, I might have done too much. Uh, duh. <laughs> anyway, uh, I get up out of the lazy boy. I'm trying to get to the bathroom because I realize I'm fixing to go out and uh, I'm fixing OD. Um, and I want to shock the senses. I'm trying to get to the shower so I can uh, get some cold water splashed on my body and hopefully uh, pull myself out of this. Um, didn't make it that far. I fell back on the toilet. And as I did, things started to go really, really black, really, really dark. Let me, let me stop and take a second to explain this. You know, there's darkness that we all experience. We turn a light out, we see darkness. And then there's darkness that you feel. And this is like a cold, wet um, blanket that just totally enveloped me. Um, it pushed down on me. It pushed down on my on my lungs, it pushed down on my chest. It totally suffocated me. It was a it was a darkness that I could like almost like a syrup that I couldn't crawl through. And uh, I realized I was OD and I was dying. And uh, it um, was a very dramatic uh, event, of course. Um, I was dealing with all the shame of knowing that all I've done all this, all my life has been nothing but a, a disappointment and a waste. And here I was going to die an OD drug uh, induced death to shame my mom, to shame my family, to shame my wife, um, to shame my God. And uh, I was dealing with all that. And willing to accept it, you know, but I was always under the false belief that uh, once saved, always saved. And so I thought, you know, well, you know, I'm going to die, but I'm still going to go to heaven because I was saved when I was when I was 14. And uh, that was quite the opposite of what happened. Um, as I'm dealing with all this shame and guilt and remorse. Uh, things are getting darker and darker, and I feel a, a feeling that, like, I'm being sucked down into a a, a whirlpool, a, a, a tunnel, a wind tunnel, so to speak. I'm being pulled down, and uh, I look down on my body. I could see my body, but barely, and I see this slithering, reptilian-looking python-type snake swirl around my body and get all around my stomach, my my. My, my torso and around my shoulders and all the way up to my to my face and uh, it has the upper body of a reptilious looking type creature uh, with arms and upper body arms real muscular looking uh, real scaly uh, tentacle type hair real big head <sighs> millions and millions of sharp tiny razor like teeth and gets right in my face and says, I got you now. And uh, I freaked. Uh, I freaked out. I look down. All over my body I see these similar small type creatures, but they don't have the serpentine snake body, but they're like little demons. And they're ripping me apart. They're chewing on me. They're pulling me down. And I realized, hey... Uh, I'm not in heaven, and I'm not going to heaven. I'm going to hell. And uh, I let out a blood-curdling, god-awful scream from the most 
deepest part of my soul, I screamed out, God! <clears throat> um, it's weird, I had one, one foot in this world and one foot in death in the spiritual world and a realm. So, once again, you have to understand, time and space is all twisted and distorted. And uh, what seconds here is an eternity in hell. Uh, as I'm fighting and I'm clawing and I'm trying to, to, to get out of where I'm at, and I'm fighting this serpent and this demon that's all ripped, wrapped around me. Uh, and I scream out for God. Uh, my wife was sleeping in bed, sober as a judge, totally uh, unbeknownst of what I'd done and what had happened. Uh, she kissed me goodnight whenever I got into bed. I was glad to see me home, but she didn't know what I had done. She uh, come running to the bathroom, but the time it took her to be woken up when she heard this blood-curdling, god-awful scream, she says it's a scream that still haunts her, that she... She can't describe. It was just like someone screaming from hell. And uh, the time it took her to get from the bed to the bathroom, which was just a matter of a few feet, uh, was an eternity for me. And while that was going on, a battle was taking place for my soul. Um, I cried out for God. And things got a little lighter. And... Uh, I would feel love and uh, a calming emotion that would, that would just overwhelm me. And things would start to get brighter. It was the presence of God. And as this would happen, it would really, really upset and make this demon furious. And he would scream and shake his arms and throw these thoughts into my head. And my head would shake back and pull back and... It was like I was being physically assaulted, but it was a mental, a spiritual attack. And he threw these god awfulest thoughts in my head. Oh, death, destruction, oh, evil. Pure, unadulterated evil. An evil that I can't explain, I can't put into words. And uh, I'd say, God, I need you, I need you. Where are you? Where are you? And then all of a sudden, things were starting to lighten up and get a little brighter and a little wider. And uh, this went back and forth. As far as me seeing fiery pits of hell, I did not see that. All I saw that was what was all around me and on me. I saw total darkness. I've been told that there is different degrees of hell. So maybe I was in an outer realm of hell. All I know is I wasn't in heaven. And, uh, and if it wasn't heaven, it had to have been hell. Um, then this demon started laughing. And uh, he tried all the obvious um, bold things to, to, to get my mind and thoughts off of anything godly or holy. And so he said, where is your, where is your God? And he's right in my face saying these things whispering in my ear where, where is your God I'm right here right now I'm in your face and you cry out for God where is he and one of Satan's biggest tools to use against Christians is doubt and fear and it's exactly what happened I, I started to think about it I, I, I said you know what God he's, he's right I mean I'm crying out for you. I need you. Where, where are you? And all of a sudden, there he was, right there on my right hand side. This giant, huge face. The most sweetest, gentlest face. He had white, curly hair white rolling curly beard long beard and the uh, most beautiful blue eyes you could ever imagine eyes that literally 
hypnotize you. You get lost into the take all pain and suffering and ill will away. Eyes that heal. Eyes that mend. Eyes that lift you up. And he reached out his hand. And he spoke to me. But as he spoke to me, I didn't see his lips move, but I could hear like a clear voice in my head. And he said, just take my hand. And so I'd reach out for his hand. But as I would reach out for his hand, things would start to get brighter and lighter. But each time I would reach out, that's when his demon would really get mad. And I mean, he'd just start to beat me up. And he'd start to throw all these horrible, awful things in my head. And then, you know, then it, it got to where it was nuts. It was crazy. He would, he would say stuff like, you know, you can't ever cuss again. You can't ever drink again. You can't ever smoke again. You can't gamble. Blah, 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 blah. blah. And it's just, uh, what did it matter? I'm dying. I'm in hell. What did it matter that I held on to anything that I couldn't do anything again? It didn't matter. My little soul's sake for eternity was at stake, and, and all these things were being thrown in my head. But what's crazier is I was contemplating it, and I was thinking about it, and so I would start to withdraw my hand. And as I did, things would get darker and darker and blacker and blacker. And I knew, I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that once things became totally white and light, or totally black and dark, that the decision would be made over my soul and where I would spend eternity. This went back and forth, back and forth. And I was just, I was beat up. Uh, I was at the point where I couldn't take it anymore. I literally was given up. I had, I had no love for me. I hated myself. I hated my life. I hated everything that I had done. I hated everything that I, I had accomplished, which was nothing but pain and misery. I had no love for myself no more. And so I had gave up. God knew that. And like I said, that's where this time and space thing gets all twisted. Because when I let out that scream, and it seemed like it was an eternity before, um, you know, my wife showed up. It wasn't. It was a matter of seconds. And right at the point, when I'm at the point of giving up and I can't take it no more, she's right there. And she says, Michael! That's what she calls me. It's a long story. But I turned to her and I looked at her and I had no more love for myself. But I loved her. And I honestly believe that my love for her won over, out, over and out and above the loss of love I had for myself for my own well-being and everything turned real bright and white when I looked at her she said my head was this black spot she seen this black spot turn and there was no eyes there was no nose no mouth no ears just a black void that was about the size of a cantaloupe and uh, pure evil and it scared her to death Literally scared the hell out of her. She took off running. Um, she went to go and lock the door. She don't know why she did this. The time it took her to get right back, she said all she did was go to lock, unlock the door and get back. It seemed like years had passed. And all of a sudden, though, I had a resurgence. I had a, I had a reason to fight. I had a reason to not give up. And God knew this. He knew that I was at the point to where I could not do it on my own anymore. And I believe he sent an angel to her and said, go tend to your husband. That's where she heard that scream. This went back and forth, back and forth. And uh, eventually, you know, I said to myself, I said, you know what, God? I See, I kept trying to hold back just one little tiny bit. And that's what Satan does. He tries to get you to hold back. You give everything. You give 99.9% .9 for that one point. At 0.01 percent, he wants you to hold on to, and it don't happen that way. God wants it all, or He wants nothing. And I finally relented, and I said, "You know what, God? I don't care anymore. I don't care about myself. I don't care. All I care is about you. Is and if you want me to live in a cardboard box on the side of the street, I'll do it. Um, I give you my all. 
I hold nothing back. I want you. And when I finally made that decision to totally give up, and he reached out his hand, his hand never left, but I was able to reach out and grab his hand, and I crawled up literally into his hand. It was at that moment that when I gave up, he stepped in, and he took me. That was acceptance. That was the salvation. That was the aspect of, of the blood pouring over me in Jesus Christ. And uh, a lot of things happened. It seemed like it was months later, years later. My wife comes back and she's in my face and she's asking me what's going on. And I told her, shh, I'm talking to God. Because I was. Me and God, we went down. Deep dialogue about all kinds of different things. Um, he seemed fit to take me to the gates of heaven. He didn't take me to heaven or into heaven, but he let me see it. He let me glimpse it. Let me view it. And it was this mighty, huge city. All I saw was the walls and the gates shining bright like gold. And a huge, huge, monstrous, m massive, lively oak tree. The biggest tree you could imagine in life. Um, like the tree in Avatar. In this huge, monstrous tree. And there was all these people underneath it, and there's a brook that, that went by it. I've been told maybe, possibly, that was the river of life. Sounds, sounds like it could be. Um, and the tree of life. And I asked God, I said, God, uh, why aren't the people going into heaven? I mean, there's the gates right there. He said, they can't. I said, well, I, I, I don't understand. Why, why can't they? He said, they don't have the spiritual strength yet. See, I think that if I would have died at that moment, I would be one of those people underneath that tree. He said they have to eat the fruit, this holy fruit, until they sustain enough spiritual strength to enter the gates of heaven. Because you have to have so much holy strength. And if they didn't have it, it would kill them. Maybe these are people that accept God literally on their dying deathbed. Um, I don't know. Um, all I know is they weren't strong enough in their physical life when they passed and came into the spiritual life and they had to eat this fruit until they gained enough strength that they could enter in the gates of heaven. But it gave me hope. And uh, that's pretty much it as far as the hell aspect. Um, I'm thinking about later on trying to actually draw what I saw, uh, God is grand, gracious enough to, to bless me with the talent of artistic ability, and and I've been having this this feeling that I, I'm wanting to draw what I saw. I want to draw pictures of him, and I want to draw pictures of this demon, and uh, I'm going to do that. And when I do, I'll share it with y'all. So. Um, I hope this answers uh, some of the questions some of y'all may have. And uh, I'll be making some other videos. And before I do, though, and until then, I want you to know there's hope. There's always hope. With God, there's always hope. And if He could love me, He definitely loves you. Take Him. I pray this. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you.